Lord of heaven and earth, we just come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just pray for help now as we preach thy son to the people. We just pray for all those in the building now and also those that might be listening online. We just pray thy blessing upon thy word that it might be, today might be the day of their eternal redemption. We're crying to thee and looking for thee for blessing and for power and boldness to preach thy son. We just ask these things again and pray that thou, by thy spirit, use thy, by the Holy Spirit's power, thou wilt use thy word for thy glory and honour and for the salvation of souls. We know that we all need thy salvation. And we just pray that there might be those who would understand today, this afternoon, wherever they're at at this time, they might understand their deep need, an eternal or an urgent need of, of thine eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking to thee for thy blessing upon thy word, upon these messages in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I want to um, look at a message I've called, Where Do We Go From Here? Where Do We Go From Here? Now, see, you and I, when we're born in this world, we're born as sinners, as we know, and because of the fact that we're sinners, we need to come in repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's important to understand that If we only had a body uh, and we would die and then cease to exist. The fact is we have a spirit, a soul and a body. So we're made up of three different parts. As I said, if we had a body, we would just die and that would be it. That would be the finish. But we, we are not made up of just a body which we make so much fuss of. So we need to understand this. We have a spirit and a soul. And um, in the Bible, in Genesis 1, you go there, Genesis 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Just read these few verses here. Yeah, Genesis chapter 1 and reading at verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, that is, in our resemblance, that is, a representative figure, after our likeness, that is, after our fashion. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, that is the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we are similar to God in the sense that uh, God is a triune being. The Godhead consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew 28 verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So in the same way we have a soul, a body and a spirit. Uh, we'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse Yeah, now this is written to Christians, just bear that in mind. Um, and the very God of peace uh, sanctify you wholly or set you apart wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. There are three parts that we're made up of. Spirit and soul and body 
be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said this is written to Christians, to believers. Now James 2 verse 26 says, For as the um, body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So because we have an eternal soul and spirit, which leave our bodies the moment we die, we should be asking ourselves, where do I go from here? You know, what is my destination really? Where am I going to end up when I die? In other words, when my spirit and soul leave my body, where am I actually going to be? Because the real you and the real me is not our body. It's our soul. That's the real, the, the real person. You know, we can see our body. That's obvious. But the body, the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. This just proves again that we have an eternal spirit and soul that leaves our body the moment we die. But where will you be one second after you die? So where do I go from here? Ask yourself that question. If never before you've asked yourself, you need to ask yourself, where will my spirit and soul go when it leaves my body, when I die? When I die. For the answer to this, we need to look at the Bible. Now, Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. That's one way of looking at it. So we need to look at the Word of God and see instruction from it that we might understand that we're in a sinful condition. We are sinners in the sight of the Lord and we need salvation for those sins. We need forgiveness for those sins. Otherwise, when we do die, our soul will go down to hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why we have this gospel meeting. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we get out there and preach the gospel to people. Uh, because we're concerned about your soul that leaves your body the moment you die. So, um, Luke chapter 12. We go to Luke chapter 12, verses 15 to 21. Very well-known um, verses here. Luke chapter 12. Yeah, and verse 15. And he said unto them, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. That means wanting money and goods and things like that. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. In other words, the things that the person has. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought to within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruit? So in other words, he had a... In this land down under, we would say that this man had a bumper crop. In other words, he had a lot of grain, and his silos weren't big enough to fit it. And so he had to get more silos. This is the way, way we would sort of interpret it in our lang language down under here. So he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say um, to my soul, soul, this man knew that he had a soul, didn't he? He say, he's actually talking to his soul. It's an unusual thing to do, but he did. He said, soul, uh, thou hast many goods. Well, don't forget it's a parable, but the Lord's you know, explaining this to sort of point out a spiritual truth from this physical thing. Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. He thought that he had much, you know, he had many, uh, much money, m many goods, and he thought, well, he'll just relax, he'll just retire and just put his legs up, you know, put his feet up on the, on the desk and be done with it, you know, and just relax. But God said unto him, Thou fool, you're an idiot, in other words. Put it in our language. You're foolish. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. In other words, you're going to die tonight. You're going to die tonight. But we don't know when we're going to die, do we? You know, we could, any of us could die today. We don't know. Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So when our spirit and soul leave our body, we can't take anything with us. Job um, chapter 1 and verse 20, uh, verses 20 and 21. We better go there. Job chapter 1, verse 20. 
In Job chapter 1 and verse 20, and verse 21, the first part, Then Job arose and rent his mantle, in other words, tore his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I uh, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither or there. So, there are two destinations when we die, heaven or hell. Which one uh, we go to depends on what we do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're all heading to hell because of our sin by default. That's, you know, when we're born in this world, we're born as sinners, and therefore we're heading down to hell. God wants to change that for you. God wants to give you his salvation. God wants you to believe on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved from going down to hell. Let's go to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Very well-known verses there. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we haven't been perfect. See, God's standard is perfection. It's way up there. The only one who measured up to that standard is the Lord Jesus Christ because he's God. God in a body. God manifest in the flesh. We cannot attain unto that level of, of righteousness. And this is the point. No matter how good or how bad we are, we all need God's salvation because we're sinners. But God is able to forgive you of all of your sins this afternoon if you put your faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He, he provided that redemption by shedding his blood on the cross. By His blood was shed on the cross that you and I might receive our salvation, that we might receive forgiveness for our sins if and only if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, and being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Now propitiation, it's a big word. It means to satisfy the wrath of God. In other words, to satisfy the anger of God. God is angry with us because of our sin. And yet God is able to save your soul. God is able to forgive you of all of your sins if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in him. So it says here, uh, yes, uh, propitiation is to satisfy the wrath of God against sin, to turn away God's wrath, to offer a sacrifice that makes one at peace with God. Notice what it says here, that makes one at peace with God. This is an individual thing. In other words, once you realize you're a sinner, you've got to admit that to God, which is repentance, change of mind, simply agree with God that you're a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'll have peace with God, as Romans 5.1 says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's important. We've got to understand that salvation is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it says here in verse 26 of Romans chapter 3, To declare, I say, uh, at this time his righteousness, that is God's righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So I want to look at um, two men now. Two men now. Uh, one went to a place... Uh, of comfort and one went to a place of burning torment we call it hell so we're looking at Luke chapter 16 you probably already guessed that if you're a believer you probably already know where we're going Luke chapter 16 the rich man and Lazarus uh, verses 19 to 31 we usually read for this this is like a look into the future so that we can see what's going to happen when we die, the moment we die. But obviously, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be in heaven. But if we don't, we're going to be in this place called hell. So it's a good description of what actually happens the moment we actually die. So we're looking at Luke 16 and verse 19. 
There was a certain rich man uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen. In other words, he had expensive posh clothes and fared sumptuously every day. In other words, he did well. He was very rich and all the rest of it. He had everything that he wanted physically on this earth. And there was a beggar, um, a certain beggar named Lazarus. Now, this is the other end of the... See, here we have a really, you know, um, a, re a man that had a lot of money and had everything he wanted physically on this earth. And here we have a beggar right in the gutter. You know, he's down there, uh, the opposite to the rich man here. And uh, a beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, laid at the rich man's gate, uh, full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. All he wanted was some crumbs that fell from this rich man's table. Moreover, the do uh, dogs came and licked his sores, and it uh, came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, that is, paradise. It's a, like a figure of, we look at that now as heaven. We just use that as illustration. This is the equivalent of heaven. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, because of suffering and burning and torment in hell, and God does not want you to go there. And, not only that, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, so obviously, and Lazarus in his bosom. So he's looking and he's seeing uh, this, um, this poor beggar named Lazarus. He was... Uh, he was comforted because he was uh, in Abraham's bosom. We'll see that in a minute. Yeah, and, and Lazarus in his bosom, the place of comfort and affection. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and, and cool my tongue for I am tormented or tortured in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence, or from, or from thence, sorry, from there. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest ascend um, him to my father's house. In other words, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brethren, in other words, five brothers back there on earth, that he may testify unto them. In other words, preach the gospel to them, lest they also come into this place of torment, or place of torture. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, they have the Bible, the word of God. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, that is, which, what, that which is written the word of God, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And the most important person has risen from the dead, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ, and people still don't believe. They still haven't put their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. To me, that's sad when there's an opportunity given by God that we can be saved and we just don't take that opportunity. I want to go down now to um, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 21 to John chapter 8, verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. In other words, where I go, ye cannot come. So he's talking about heaven here. If we don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously, where the Lord Jesus Christ is, and he's gone back to heaven now that he's resurrected and be ascended to the Father's right hand, we cannot be there because we don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way we can be there is if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him, believe on him for our salvation. 
Then said the Jews, will he kill himself because he saith, whither I go, or where I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Another proof, the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He was there in eternity past. Uh, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, or I am, ye shall die in your sins. And that's the same for us. We've got to believe our Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal self-existent one, the one who came down from heaven to die on the cross and be our sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice upon the cross to end all sacrifices. Um, so 1 Timothy chapter 2, we want to go there, 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 to 6 For this is good and acceptable um, in the sight of God our Saviour who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. There's a proof that Calvinism is a load of rubbish. God will have all men to be saved. He wants you to be saved no matter who you are. You've got to understand that. It wasn't just a certain people that, that the Lord Jesus Christ died for. He died for us all. He died for us all. Yes, so we need to understand that. That's very plain in the Word of God. Who will have all men to be saved, and not only that, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's found in the Word of God, the Bible. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. One person has gone between God and ourselves to bring us back to God, and it's the, his beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that mediator, the only one that can save your soul. And it says here, verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all. Again, away with the Calvinist doctrine. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Acts 4.12 says, no need to turn to it, but neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we'll turn to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 to 6. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. In other words, according to that which is written in the Word of God. It was prophesied 700 to 1,000 years before what would happen. And it took place, obviously, because it always takes place. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Let God be true, but every man a liar. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. In other words, above five, uh, over 500 believers in one hit, of whom the greater part remain unto this uh, present, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, some have died. Uh, John 11 verse 26 says, uh, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So spiritually speaking, Christians never die. Because they've been born again. This is what you need this afternoon. If you've never been born again, you need to be born again. Uh, John chapter 3 and verse 3. Just read out a few verses here. Jesus answered and said unto him, this is um, unto Nicodemus. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, or born from above, born into God's family, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, John chapter 1, verses 11 to 13. Better go there. John chapter 1.
Yeah, John chapter 1, verse 11. He came, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. And this can be you this afternoon. If you come to Him in all your sin, in all your need, admit that to God and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. To them gave He power to become the sons of God or the children of God, even to them that believe on His name. Colossians 1 and verse 14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So you can receive the forgiveness for your sins by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Re receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. And then, the moment you die, you won't go down to hell, you'll go to heaven. That's what God wants for each and every one of us. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. When you die, will you be in heaven or hell?